Welcome uh, to the press conference following our first ever EU ASEAN summit. Here to give a statement are the President of the European Council, the Prime Minister of Cambodia as co-chair, the President of the European Commission, of course, and the President of the Philippines as coordinator of the EU ASEAN relations. We have just published, or we're in the midst of publishing, the declaration on the website of the European Council, so please check that out. There is also interpretation into Khmer for the media joining us, and I would first like to invite the President of the European Council to take the floor. I hope that the interpretation is ongoing. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This summit today was historic, bringing together the leaders of the EU and ASEAN for the first time. A special thanks to my co-chair, Prime Minister Hun Sen, Chair of ASEAN, and President Marcos as ASEAN Coordinator for Relations with the European Union. Today, we are endorsing our EU ASEAN Plan of Action until 2027. We also just concluded our EU ASEAN Comprehensive Air Transport Agreement, the first ever region-to-region -region aviation agreement, and we signed our partnership and cooperation agreements with Thailand and Malaysia. These agreements will strengthen our political dialogue and boost our cooperation with the two countries. Today, the EU ASEAN celebrated 45 years as partners, and this month also marks the two years anniversary of the EU and ASEAN becoming strategic partners. The EU-ASEAN partnership is unique. It brings Europe and Asia closer together to increase the security and prosperity of, of our citizens. The EU is ASEAN's second largest foreign investor and third largest trading partner. Together, we represent over 1 billion people in 37 countries. So, our partnership is a major force with great potential to tackle global challenges like climate change, digital transition, and free and fair trade. The Indo-Pacific is a region of growth and opportunity, and as a strategic partner, we are strong advocates for multilateralism and the international rules-based order. We share the strong belief that global challenges can only be addressed by working together. And today's meeting is also an opportunity to boost our cooperation for greater prosperity, and one way to do that is through trade. Trade is a powerful engine for growth and for creating closer ties between our regions. Our trade agreements with Vietnam and Singapore are a good example, and we are working on trade agreements with other countries in the region. We can also forge stronger ties for the good of our planet. Climate change is a threat to everyone's existence, and we share the same objective. We owe it to the next generation to cooperate on this global challenge together. We also discuss the importance of the digital transition. This will play a massive part in the success of our societies. So we need to bend together to develop safe, fair, and inclusive digital economies. We also discussed the war against Ukraine and its dramatic consequences for the world, especially on energy and food security. This war blatantly violates the United Nations Charter and the attempt to change internationally recognized borders by force is not acceptable. We will never accept it. We also discussed the crisis in Myanmar that negatively impacts stability in the region and we continue to support ASEAN's efforts to address this crisis. We support the full implementation on, of the five-point consensus and the personal investment of Prime Minister Hun Sen. Finally, we discussed our intensified security cooperation with several Asian and ASEAN partners, including maritime security. Maritime security is vital for the world, is, vi is vital also for Europe, due to the importance of trade routes and their protection. It's in our mutual interest to bolster our cooperation in this area. This has been a memorable day. ASEAN can count on the EU to be a steadfast partner. Together, we'll make this partnership even stronger. I thank you. Thank you, President. May I now invite the Prime Minister of Cambodia to take the floor, please. Uh, um, <coughs> 
Adam Olubutri Kim Tom Tom Dai Naka Aiki Pip Naka Lang Lang Robot Adam Batin Amal Mani Tom Rap Kim Japram the Kaswakum Yakakrai Chapo Lufre Olufre Tevan Jurum Naknum Son of Sapor Muni Tiny Kuchioka Novi Sevisan Mui Naknum Pip Jedai Ku របស់យើងក្នុងការរៀបចំកិច្ចប្រជុំកម្ពុជារំលឹកខួរមនុស្សសាវរីអាស៊ានសាភាពអឺរ៉ុបទទួលបានជួបជ័យនិងប្រកប
Russia has unleashed its war of aggression against Ukraine. War has returned to the European continent. And it is clear that this is not solely a European problem, problem but the world is feeling the brutal shock waves of this war on food prices, on energy security. And all this is a stark reminder that today in this world of interdependencies, there is no such thing as a European problem or an Asian problem either. All the challenges we face today are of global nature and therefore affect all of us. You, ASEAN, know what is at stake and therefore we are very grateful that you have signed the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation with Ukraine. We very much welcome that. The more acute global challenges are, the stronger our partnership must be. And today, we indeed discussed several strands of work to reinforce this partnership. The first one is energy. We want together to accelerate with our partners the clean energy revolution. So today we launched a just energy transition partnership with Vietnam, for example, similar to the one we have with Indonesia. And we have also decided to start an EU-ASEAN new energy dialogue because we all know renewable energy is not only good for our climate, but it is also homegrown and therefore creates independence and security of supply. Second point is trade. A lot has been said on trade. We want to trade more with each other. We already are each other's third largest trading partners. Our free trade agreements with Vietnam and Singapore are delivering. That's impressive. So the European Union wants to conclude more such agreement, agreements with ASEAN countries. And our ultimate goal would be to negotiate a region-to-region -region free trade agreement. And my third and last point um, is on infrastructure. Because our energy and trade cooperation will only reach its full potential, if it is underpinned by the right infrastructure. Today, Team Europe put forward a 10 billion euros investment package under Global Gateway. And let me end, Prime Minister Hun Sen, by thanking you for your excellent chairmanship this year. I am now looking forward to working with Indonesia under its chairmanship of ASEAN in 2023. We have behind us over four decades of partnership, and we will continue championing peace, stability, and prosperity together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. May I invite the President of the Philippines to take the floor, please? Uh, excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We had an extraordinary opportunity today to collectively look back on our shared successes and to exchange views about our prospects for the future. We look back on ASEAN-EU achievements, most recently the signing of the ASEAN-EU Comprehensive Air Transport Agreement that was signed last October, and the adoption of the Plan of Action to implement the ASEAN-EU's Strategic Partnership for 2023 to 2027. We noted the continued strengthening of cooperation between our regions throughout the pandemic through the following mechanisms. The ASEAN regional integration support from EU+, Plus, the EU support to higher education in the ASEAN region, the enhanced regional dial EU ASEAN dialogue instrument, the EU ASEAN cooperation on sustainable use of peatland and haze mitigation, biodiversity conservation and management of protected areas in ASEAN. The integrated program in enhancing the capacity of AHA Center and ASEAN Emergency Response Mechanism. And the ASEAN-EU Migration and Border Management Program Phase 2, to name but a few. We appreciate the EU, the EU member states, and the EU financial institution and short Team Europe for the combined response of over 800 million euro to fight the health, social, and economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic in ASEAN. As we move forward 
towards post-pandemic recovery, we eagerly anticipate the resumption of negotiations for the establishment of an ASEAN-EU free trade agreement and of the ASEAN-EU trade and investment work program. I am pleased that today's summit imbued all of us as ASEAN and EU leaders alike with a sense of renewed commitment to continue nurturing and expanding our unique ASEAN-EU partnership, which will serve us well as we are squeezed by the myriad challenges that we have just discussed, such as the supply chain issues brought about by the pandemic, the global threat to food and energy security made worse by the conflict in Ukraine, and to the societal and economic havoc wrought by climate change, to name a few. I am particularly pleased that this landmark ASEAN-EU commemorative summit was shepherded to conclusion during the Philippines' coordinatorship for ASEAN-EU dialogue relations, and that the adopted ASEAN-EU joint leader statement is reflective of the broad nature of our relations and shows clear commitments from both sides to further enhance our relations. We hope to achieve more milestones as the Philippines continues to guide the ASEAN-EU dialogue relations until 2024. I assure my fellow ASEAN member states and all European Union member states that the Philippines will continue to expand all efforts available to ensure that the implementation of the Plan of Action to implement the ASEAN-EU Strategic Partnership for 2023 to 2027 proceeds as intended. We will strive to expand and deepen our cooperation in the priority areas of post-pandemic economic, economic recovery, strengthening public health institutions, maritime security and cooperation, environmental protection and sustainable economic development, combating, of course, climate change, and connectivity with its new definition, which goes beyond the strict definition of digital connectivity, but connectivity in all manners, by air, by land, by sea, by digital means. We also uh, will work for the digital transition and the lessening of the so-called digital divide, migration, and gender justice. We look forward to nurturing and bringing forth ASEAN-EU relations to greater heights in our role as country coordinator for ASEAN-EU relations in the next two years. Before I end, allow me to thank Your Excellencies, EU Council President Charles Michel, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, Czech Prime Minister Peter Fiala, and all EU member state leaders for your very warm welcome that you have given us all here in Brussels. And we look forward to the next commemoration of EU ASEAN relationships. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll now take a couple of questions. Let me start with someone from the Philippines. We had Alexis Romero from Philippine Star. Yes, please. Good day, uh, President Marcos. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> just, just about managing. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, President Marcos, you cited in your speech earlier the need to go beyond declaring respect and support for UNCLOS and to see an effective application of the UNCLOS to address maritime disputes. Mm -hmm. And we all know that this includes the South China Sea Rao. What concrete measures can the ASEAN and the EU undertake to ensure the rule of law in disputed areas beyond the usual strongly worded statements. Well, this is um, this is one of the reasons that we had this uh, we have these conferences is to map out any possible uh, actions that might be jointly taken because if, if every action that might be taken that uh, objects or uh, uh, brings a uh, brings a light to a possible violation of the UNCLOS is much stronger when it is brought about by a group of nations such as ASEAN. And if the EU now with our strategic partnership is able to also 
join their voices to that, then that will be much stronger in the terms of actually being able to enforce what UNCLOS is, uh, uh, is all about. Uh, their commitment by the, the EU's commitment, which is, which is found in the joint declaration, the EU's commitment to uh, the, even the doctrine of, uh, of um, uh, the DOC, the doctrine of behaviors in the South China Sea, is already a very, very big, uh, very, very big step for us in the Philippines, for example, and for all the countries around the South China Sea, uh, that we now have the support, a strategic support from not only the member countries of EU, but of EU itself. Now, because it, EU and ASEAN together comprise the largest, most well-organized regional aggrupations, then that will be a very, very strong, that will be a very, very strong position to be able to negotiate, even individually for the Philippines or jointly with ASEAN or even with the EU, as uh, perhaps as, uh, as uh, uh, a third party. Uh, to, for us to take action and to negotiate further uh, these uh, difficulties that we are all having to face uh, with the problems uh, in terms of territoriality in the South China Sea. Thank you. Yeah. We have a, another question. Rosie uh, Birchard, yes, from Channel News Asia, please. Thank you very much, Rosie Burchard, reporting for Channel News Asia, CNA. Uh, to President Marcos and Prime Minister Hun Sen, uh, the EU has announced this 10 billion euros of infrastructure investments. Now, that is just a, a drop in the ocean, really, when you compare it to what the Asian Development Bank estimates is needed in terms of investment to keep up levels of growth in ASEAN. What would you have liked to see? Would you like to see more? Can you give us some insights into that? And to, the, uh, to Presidents Michel and uh, and von der Leyen, we heard a lot about a potential block-to-block -block free trade agreement there. Now, I believe that's still pretty far off. What, would, what are the biggest barriers in your eyes? Is it Myanmar? Is it about climate policies from the ASEAN side? What do you think needs to happen to be able to get there? Thank you very much. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the, 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 the one who can best answer that will be the, uh, the uh, donor of the 10 billion, uh, 10 billion euro. And we would like to ask them how they would want us to, uh, to use their hard-earned money when it comes to, uh, to ASEAN. So perhaps uh, President Michel. No, maybe, maybe I will try to, to answer both questions. First of all, we are absolutely determined to, uh, to um, upgrade the level of our ambition in terms of a strategic partnership with the ASEAN countries. It's very clear. And um, it's also very important to take into account the fact that the EU is mobilizing money in order to make a very tangible the bilateral partnerships we have with each of the ASEAN, uh, the members of this ASEAN um, uh, organization, each of the ASEAN uh, countries. And this is an important signal that we want to send uh, to, to, the, to the leaders but also to the people uh, in that region. Po point one. Maybe with a smile, uh, another information that I had the occasion to share yesterday with some of the ASEAN colleagues. Sometimes it could happen, we have some difficulties within uh, the EU uh, to be on the same page. Sometimes we have divisions, we have difficult questions, we have difficult topics. But one thing is absolutely certain. When we have on the agenda of the European Council our relationship with ASEAN, spontaneously, immediately, the 27 member states, we are all on the same page. We are absolutely motivated to strengthen the ties. We have exactly the same assessment. We think this is uh, a strategic uh, importance for all of us to, to develop and to make more tangible uh, this uh, partnership with uh, that region. And this is uh, a, a transition to the second part of your question, the trade agreements. You know, this is a, a general debate across the EU. Uh, we believe in the free trade. We believe in the globalization, but we think at the same time that we need to work for more common standards, more similar uh, standards, you know, to take more into account uh, our common goals in terms of climate change, for instance, in terms of labor conditions, uh, for instance. And it's very good that uh, we have demonstrated that it's possible with some of the countries of ASEAN to have free trade agreements, and we can observe that this is uh, very positive on both 
research sites. Uh, it's, uh, it's delivering concrete and tangible results in terms of increase of the volume of the economic exchanges uh, between those countries and the EU. And uh, this was told by the President of the Commission. It's not a secret that we have also exploratory tools, exploratory tools with some other uh, uh, ASEAN countries in order to identify how we can try to make some progress and maybe to launch negotiations in the following months or in the, ne the near future. And there is another dream we have. We have the dream to make possible sooner or later uh, uh, EU ASEAN free trade agreement. But of course, in order to make it happen, it's also important that uh, within the ASEAN, steps are made in terms of uh, economic integration. It's not exactly the same situation in each uh, of those countries. And it's probably also an, 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 an encouragement with respect for the ASEAN countries uh, to, uh, to, to, to observe uh, some, uh, some, uh, some progress in terms of economic uh, integration. You can see that you are really motivated. We are very proud because this statement to Today uh, is a very strong message. Uh, it's a strong impetus uh, for the for the future. There are concrete projects uh, on the table, and we are we are very optimistic and confident that on a regular basis we'll have the occasion uh, to meet at the leaders' level in order to assess what we did and what we need to do in order to make sure that uh, we are we are implementing what we have decided. If I might just uh, add something, uh, it is remarkable actually to see. Uh, during our meetings, how, uh, despite the marked difference, differences between EU member states and ASEAN member states, that it is remarkable that we identify as the same, we identify the same priorities as uh, EU together, as, as ASEAN does, as uh, the EU seems to also have the same priorities. And those are the, in the areas that we spoke about, environmental protection, sustainable economic development, combating climate change, change, connectivity, cybersecurity, digital transition, migration, gender justice. So it is, uh, as I said, it, just is, it is just an indication and a manifestation of how global we have actually become. And although we come from very different places, from different, very different conditions, uh, we have a, same, a very similar view, a sem very similar worldview of the challenges that we all face. Perhaps you want to say first? Yeah, go ahead. Kim Song Patam, some cracker. Kim Song Patam, and ប៉ុន្តែត្រូវឃើញនៅការបំពេញឲ្យគ្នាទៅវិញទៅមករវាងសេដ្ឋកិច្ចតំបន់ទាំង <coughs> បានឯកភាពគ្នាដើម្បីប្រកាសឡើងឲ្យមានកិច្ចព្រមព្រៀងពាណិជ្ជកម្មសេរីយើងពិតជាមិនមែនចង់ឲ្យប្រជាជនរ
ពាក្យតិនជាមួយនឹងបញ្ហានេះបញ្ហានោះខ្ញុំក៏ចង់ស្រួលថាតើអឺយូរបានចុះហត់ទៅលេខាជាមួយ sang khom tha chom noi ni kư chi chom noi dah yeun a rien robos yeun aoi khat khom prang prang da mai ngeu pcho lang thoe chi dai ku smau phiep nang smau thit chi muoi nang eu yu som ok kon Madam President Yeah uh, indeed you are right the global gateway is a much bigger program 300 billion for investment worldwide and there are different regions with different needs. The advantage with ASEAN is that we are meeting a highly developed economy. And therefore, the investment is um, not only the crucial point, but um, as this is public investment. For us, it's important to have these infrastructure projects. And by infrastructure, I'm not only speaking about old-fashioned infrastructure terminology, but in the sense that President Marcos was uh, describing. And what we need there is the incentive of the public sector um, as joint actions where it is needed, a conducive environment, for example, regulatory environment, the private sector, and the exchange of technology. And this is growing on three partnerships that we are developing together, the ASEAN-EU Green Transition Partnership, the ASEAN-EU Connectivity Partnership, that starts this year, and the ASEAN-EU Energy Dialogue. And this is the overall concept, so you're right, the 10 billion are one part, but certainly not the whole picture of um, the way we address the projects. Now, what the region-to-region -region free trade agreement uh, is concerned, we started to negotiate in 2007, and a few years after, it stopped. And then, for a while, um, nothing happened. And then, um, with the one or the other member country of ASEAN, we were able to develop a free trade agreement. Therefore, we have now building blocks, I would call it that name, it's much more mature. And this encourages, and I'm very pleased to listen to our guests, this encourages us to think in a broader spectrum for a region-to-region -region free trade agreement, as we have already experienced now with building blocks. It may be that, first of all, the one or the other free trade agreement with individual countries of the ASEAN is coming first, but we have no experience. Um, the free trade agreements that are in place are delivering, so they show the success, and we have proven that we're able to match the different interests. Thank you. Um, yes, Finbar, please. Thank you very much. Finbar Birmingham with the Hong Kong newspaper of the South China Morning Post. Uh, a lot of talk about the, um, the things that you have in common, but just reading the, uh, the joint statement, um, there certainly are some differences, particularly on Ukraine, where it says most members strongly condemn the war in Ukraine and stress that is causing immense human suffering. Um, to, the, uh, to, to Prime Minister Hun Sen, President Marcos, uh, could you explain why it isn't all members that are condemning the war? In Ukraine, uh, just a follow-up question, um, ASEAN is often portrayed as a, a swing state between the big powers of the United States, China and Europe. Um, I'm wondering from uh, your, both of your perspectives whether you uh, welcome the European Union to compete with uh, the United States and China or whether indeed you, you do see it in that way. Thank you very much. ពតហើយគឺនៅក្នុងអាស៊ានរបស់យើងមិនមែនមានគោលចំហូលដូចគ្នាទាំងស្រុងនោះទេសក្រេសម្រេចនៅមហាសាន
บอชนอตคอนโทรสเกรสมรัตเราบอกอังกาซาไปยึดกอลตุจงปูกาเชียนเพียบหรือการกัดยกตึกใดกระเป็นูขนมตนะเชียบเทียนอาเซียนยื่นกบาลสมองสมบูรณ์ดำไม่เจ็งสกิลแข่งกาเปียปอนเสียมวยนังกาสันตินีหรือบอทชกบันนึกขนมรวิ่งรูซีนังอิกแกรนยื่นบทโยลพร้อมเสียมวยนังกาเชลียนเพียนกาปราปรากำลังหรือกากัดยกตึกใดนูตีสมองนี้บกเตยยื่นเหมือนแม่นครอนใต้จินเนคอมโตรตีกอบในยื่นบานดาตัวจิตตีจินเนเธอกูสวงสอเตลือสกฤตสมัยนี้นี่นึกไอ้องค์การสามยืดยืดหายเปรียบฟอนจมวยหนึ่งกรูโกลจมพอหายเตะตองจมวยหนึ่งปัญหาอุยแกรนนี่เตะตองหนึ่งนี่การบุญชีกอบบานสมรัยหนึ่งรู้ใจดาวใบบุญชุนกรูข้างพระไดดอมบินรวมจมวยจปนเตยช่วยอุยแกรนในการบดอบดาลหายเยื่อก่อนนั่งตัวตัวเยื่อสิกาก้ามระบบอุยแกรนดอกพรำเนี่ยนึกน้องไม้ใครแม่กระานี่ดาวใบทั่วชื่อเนี่ยบ่มพลายเจ้ากรอบมินเพราะวิจารุงครุฑนะหายวิจารุงมนุษย์ทอแต่เยื่อมันบุญชุนที่เห็นว่าเยื่อโจลชบังจมวยนึกรูซีขนมปฏิอุยแกรนนุตีสมัยดอมมาโกลายในจุมพอระบบฟิลิปปินส์ Perhaps I should um, answer the second part of your question uh, in the about the competition between the United States and China um, and if it's that what we want. Believe me, we would rather not have these tensions in our part of the world. That is the last thing that we would like. And We, the Philippines, for 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 our part, have sta has taken an independent policy, and we absolutely refuse to go back to the situation of the Cold War, where we have to pick sides in terms of who the superpower is that we are aligned with. Uh, what uh, we what we say is that, uh, to be put it very simply, is that uh, in the Philippines, our foreign policy is the. Policy for peace and for the national interest. So, foreign policy will always be guided by a commitment to peace and the pursuit of the national interest. Uh, in terms, <clears throat> uh, in, in, ter then, the, in terms of uh, uh, that competition, as I said, we have to find. I think all all of us member states, especially in ASEAN, have to find our own our own way. However, I think it, I think I would not be uh, overstepping by saying that we agree, in the sense that we are committed to the, the idea that the future of the Asia Pacific region should be decided by Asia Pacific countries and not any other power outside of our area. Thank you. We have uh, one more question, I believe. Uh, yes, from uh, Nestor Corrales, please. Also from the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. President Marcos. Um, what has been the EU's response to your call to concretize the loss and damage concept in relation to climate financing and what measures can be done to ensure that major polluters will be made accountable? Well, uh, it's, a, it's this very tricky question, um, and I brought it up simply to uh, illustrate that EU has, in fact, been at the forefront uh, in this kind, in the kind of, um, uh, shall we say, compensation for climate change. And, however, the issue of, of damage and loss is still, although it is a, a big step forward that we all now accept, both developing and developed countries now accept the concept of damage and loss, uh, the actual number uh, is very, very hard to determine. And beyond that, even if we are able to quantify the damage and loss, you say it's $100 million, whatever the number is, what do we do with that number? Who do we go to? Who do we, who, 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 who pays the bulk of it? Uh, I, I, however, I sense uh, that there is, a, there is a willingness for the developed countries to participate and to help 
in uh, mitigation, uh, to help in adaptation for those countries like the Philippines, most of the countries around ASEAN that are very vulnerable. There is a willingness to help, but how to provide that help is still a question that we cannot definitively answer. Uh, that is why a lot of work has to be done, and I have brought it up with the EU, and I've said that this is an important issue, especially for the Philippines and for many, many other countries. Uh, but uh, again, it's uh, the, the work that we have ahead of us to be able to come to some kind of agreement as to what damage and loss actually means. And what, how will the compensation for that damage and loss be, uh, be, be made? And for, for on my part, I think until we are able to determine that, I think we should think of what we can do in the future. And that, I think, has, a, uh, has great potential to be, to, to be uh, put into effect at the sh in, in the short term rather than in the very long term. Thank you. Thank you for... Um joining us for this press conference. Check out the joint declaration which we have published. Thank you and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.